Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was very creepy. I don't even know who some of you are, actually. Wait, where's the your whiskey? The mics are on now. Thank you for being here. Hello, hi. Where's the whiskey? You, yeah, I thought they were going to bring out whiskey for you guys. Bring yeah, where's the whiskey? Whiskey! Oh, here, come on, bring it out. That's more like it. Oh, hell yeah. You know this means they think we're no fun sober. <laughs> yeah, we, we can't do a panel without booze. Did he drink them on the way out? <laughs> Can I have two? What are we you drinking? Get, Anybody know, know what we're drinking? Sam, well, of course you know this. Sam has a new line of Sam, whiskey. Sam, do you know what we're drinking at all? <laughs> Hello, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. What is this? Is, do you know? Uh, oh, this, I, I believe, is the oh. Sassanac whiskey. Oh, <laughs> brandy. Uh, oh, dude, tell us about uh, Sassanac uh, whiskey, Sam. What a coincidence, oh, branding, huh? No, I'm actually quite intrigued, Sam. Are we Genuinely. all getting an endorsement fee? Exactly. <laughs> It's delicious. Okay, well, uh, while it's being passed out, first I gotta ask the producers, I was just mentioning this to the crowd, but when are we gonna see Adso? I mean, this cat has gotten so popular. I think he's, I think he's maybe under here somewhere. Wait, 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 wait. shouldn't we toast <laughs> first before we talk about cats? Yeah, yeah sure, slantua. 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 Do you not get one? Oh, I don't want one because I sued a fed and that was not going to mix. Yeah. But water. That's Mazel tov. Lahayam. <laughs> <laughs> Adzo, yes, back to the cat. Yeah, back to the cat. Um, I feel like none of us need to be here and you could just have the cat on stage right now and you'd all be as happy. No. When might we see him this season? I can't remember, actually. What episode does Adzo appear in? I think it's a surprise. Yeah, you have to wait and see. What it's, the hell? It's a, it's a major, spoiler. It's a major cat what spoiler. What do we do this for? <laughs> All right, let's go into the next thing. The theme song, which I love. I know so many of you love it too. You guys varied it up a little bit this, this season. Tell me the reason behind changing it up a bit. Uh, well, you know, each season we try to do something a little different for the main title song, as you've, as you've seen. And I, I believe it was your idea to go with the chorus and a choir, which was sort of partially inspired by like the Naval Academy choir and the West Point choir and... Yeah, it was, uh, we were, you know, this year, there, you know, the revolution is getting closer and there's some military aspects and we thought uh, we'd change it up a little bit and, and I heard this choral version of uh, Anchors Away and the battle hymn of the Republic, and it was just beautifully done. And we put it to bear, and we said, hey, can, can we do this? And uh, we wanted to keep Rhea involved um, also, but, uh, and he put this, he arranged this beautiful, um, you know, main title. Uh, it was just, we were, the first time we heard it, we, were, we had four versions, and I remember hearing version two, and we all just said, version two. And it was perfect, and, and uh, yeah, so that's how it came about. We uh, offered our services, obviously, to, to sing it as a... Yeah, we were going to sing it we as a whole cast. We were going to sing it with you guys. And but, once uh, again, we'll sing it tonight. Ready, everyone? <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, a little known fact is uh, season one, we were going to ask Katrina to sing the main titles. We did And then you heard it. me sing. <laughs> it did not happen. Yeah. By the way, we should say that this is being live streamed all around the world tonight. So just spoiler alert, we are going to talk about the episode that you guys just saw. So if you don't want to know anything, just give us 10, 15 minutes and then we'll, we'll get and past can spoilers. We, can we mention that it is now, you can now watch it tonight, <laughs> midnight, we've dropped it early. On the Stars app, you have to download. Everyone can watch it tonight. Yeah, you have to download the Stars app and you can watch the first episode of season five. Sam knows he read it on a scroll. That's right, and on my forehead, yes. That's right. Okay, um, Sam, speaking of which, for yes. you and Sophie, I want to talk to you both about that, that heartfelt scene with Jamie and Brie, where she and you are talking, and she says, Dad, no matter where I am, I will always be your wee girl. When you guys were doing that scene, I mean, what did, what did you think? You had to know the fans would eat that up. What was that like for you in that moment? Um... 
Sam's leaving this one to me, apparently. <laughs> um, I think the pre-wedding scenes are actually some of the first scenes that we did when we came back for season five. So I feel like they naturally had that sort of nervous energy of everyone back on set again, you know, finding your feet again as an ensemble. Um, and yeah, I think it's, you know, it's a lovely sentiment. I'm sure it's very scary for parents when you are sort of giving your child away, especially for Jamie. He hasn't really had much chance to get to know Brianna. They're just... They're just sort of seeing their relationship blossom and getting closer and closer. And yeah, now he feels like he's losing her, but um, he's not. Yeah, it's, it is exactly a bittersweet. And, you know, he's not been part of her life and he's always wanted that. And I think at least he gets to give her away and he wants it to be right. And he also wants, you know, her husband, his, his stepson to be, you know, the man that is, is, is right for his daughter. And uh, so that, that's a really nice storyline that we follow through as well. But yeah, it's a really, really beautiful moment. And I think there's a few really nice um, pre-wedding scenes there that are, are beautiful. Same with Claire. And I think, you know, for Roger and Brianna, having this wedding in the 18th century is a very different feel than it would have been for them in the 70s. I'm sure they would have happily just eloped and done it, um, you know, sort of in secret and very easy breezy, but they're doing this in a way, for their parents. Technically, they're already married, but... Um, so I think little things like Jamie remembering there's something borrowed blue, it's, it's just... It's for Brie, that's really touching, because it just takes her back to her time period a little bit and makes her feel more at home. You know, what I also love so much is the flashbacks to Claire and Jamie's wedding <laughs> that were shown, right? <laughs> that was so nice. So perhaps the producers can talk a little bit about why they wanted to show some of those flashback scenes in there because it was such a nice treat for the fans and everything kind of coming full circle. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> it was something we kind of played around with in the, the editing bay as we were watching the, the show. And, uh, you know, when you're doing a wedding, it's just redolent of other weddings and memories, and it's just a heartfelt sort of sequence. And it, I, I don't remember whose idea it was, but we were just watching the cut, and it felt right to sort of go into Jamie and Claire and go back to where it all really began, where the series began in a, in a real sense and where their relationship began. And I know when I've been at weddings, you know, since I've been married, I sit there and there's a part of me that drifts back to my own wedding and thinks about it, you know, when there, there's a couple up at the altar. And it just seemed like a, a nice touch to sort of, you know, be with them for that, for that moment. And Sam and Katrina, when was the last time that you guys watched episodes from season one? Do you ever go back Wow. And and rewatch that, or do you watch any of the montages on YouTube of fans that they put together? Isn't it? It's normally when we're on the airplane and someone else is watching it, <laughs> and you walk past and yeah, actually, and somebody else was saying that to me the other day that um, every time they're on a plane, the most the the show that they see the most often of other people watching is Outlander, which I think is amazing, <clears throat> and also you know it's the wedding episode, yeah. <laughs> You're all a bunch of perverts. <laughs> Do you guys ever go and look up the fan montages that they put together of Jamie and Claire on YouTube or anything? Because they're really, allowed. I mean, that's really sweet. Have you ever Our fans on? are the greatest, hands down. Um, yeah, no, I mean, look, we, we were very lucky that we get to have so many interactions with the fans, whether we're doing fan events like this or conventions. and. It's incredible how creative they are. Like the montages they put together or books that they put together for us. And so, yeah, it's very cool. Do we not have another screening tonight? Or is this the second one? Simultaneous. Oh, it's simultaneous, right? It is, okay. <laughs> I, Never mind. <laughs> also, in the episode, I loved when Claire and Brie were talking about Frank. I thought that was a really nice way to bring Frank back into the fold. Um, and I've also heard that we're gonna go back when he died, right? After he died, and we're gonna see some of those scenes. What can you say? It was, it was, it was in, it was Maybe. in. Maybe. It was in TV Guide. I re oh, wait, who, I re who, who died? At it this was, point, I don't was, know what's a spoiler I know, it was in, not, it was so. in TV Guide that it said that you know, we're going to go back to when after Frank died in those initial moments. We, we do have flashbacks to the 60s, yes. But no, I, I think both Sophie and I loved um, that scene or loved the opportunity to bring Frank back into her wedding day. Because at the end of the day, whether, you know, everyone knows that Jamie is the best. 
but <laughs> but Frank did raise Brianna for 20 years and you know it was her wedding day and I think that it would be crazy <laughs> if she didn't somehow think and include Frank in that moment and um, yeah I think it was really important to have that in there yeah it was one thing Katrina and I really talked about um, because you know obviously Frank sometimes gets a lot of hate but he, he did he was a wonderful husband <laughs> Jamie is the best. He did. <laughs> he did raise Brianna, and yes, Jamie and Bri are okay. starting to, you know, have this blossoming relationship. But he really was such a huge part of Claire and Brianna's lives, and she has a lot to thank him for. You know, even he prepped her for going back in time. He taught her how to shoot. He taught her how to ride. Everything. So um, he really did deserve that moment of respect on the day, and he definitely would have been in Brianna's mind. You know, having your dad give you away is a big deal. And yes, Jamie is her biological father, but they are just getting to know each other. So of course he was at the forefront of their minds. We love Frank. Yeah, we love Frank. <laughs> Yay, Frank. We do. Woo! Is there any chance Tobias might come back for some brief appearances this season in flashbacks? Tobias, I think, Tobias, Tobias, I think he's uh, busy being royal. Yeah, yeah I, I think Tobias is pretty busy. Mm -hmm. yeah. He is very busy. Okay, Richard. We, yeah. we got to talk about Roger thinking that he's going to eventually go back through the stones and go back into the 70s. How much friction is this going ca to cause in his relationship with Bree since he kind of assumes that eventually they will be going back? I don't think it's, I mean, I don't think it's necessarily directly going to cause friction. Um, I think Roger's priority is his family, is Brianna is Jemmy, um, and I think that is what he's going to put first and foremost. And I think that's one of the things that um, is sort of part of Roger's journey through season five is how do, I, uh, how do I provide for my family? How do I keep them safe? How do I fit in here? How do I adapt to the 18th century? And I think that's one of the things that he's really striving to do. One of the things he's really determined to do is sort of... Um, sort of find where he fits in in that time for his family. So I think Brianna and Roger this season are much more of a, much more of a team. They're much more sort of united, I think. Um, and I think they, they tackle a lot more together. So I think there's a bit less friction, actually. And I don't think um, the idea of will they or won't they go back to their own time necessarily causes too much tension between them. I think it's an important question for them because... Ultimately, what is going to be safest for Jemmy, really? But I think that's part of the story that we then, you know, take through season five. So, by the way, is there any chance we might find out? Obviously, it's going to be hard in the 1700s. But who the real biological father of Jeremiah is? Uh, it's definitely Stephen Bonnet. <laughs> I mean, by looking Isn't at that, him, he's so handsome. Finally. He's such a handsome child. <laughs> finally. So, I mean, look, yeah. you've seen Jemmy, right? Um, we ended up having about five sets of twins playing Jemmy, so about ten children, and I and think they, they all look, look like Ed. And they all look like Ed. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. <laughs> all right, producers, and they what do. do you they say all look that? exactly like Ed. <laughs> that was part of the well, casting remit. Oh, that was like, wait, process. what? They also cry, and they're a little bit annoying. So I don't know if that's a trait uh, yeah, that they yeah, got with their mother. I missed that bit. I missed that bit. Okay, producers, are we going to maybe find out at all? Is there any chance this season that we could? I don't know, some weird way? It's Outlander. Anything could happen. <laughs> but, I mean, Bonnet's alive. I'm so sorry. We can't hear the questions down here, so we could be saying yes to anything. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's going to happen. You're going to see it. <laughs> yeah, speaking of... We Bonnet, don't want you to hear it. It's all spoilers down here. No, is it? Speaking yeah, of... you're all fired. <laughs> Speaking of Bonnet being alive, Ed, how soon until you pop up this season? Yeah, Ed. Yeah, Ed. Yeah, tell us, Ed. Yeah, Ed. Yeah, Ed. Tell everyone. Scoop. I'm not at liberty to say. <laughs> I felt there was something missing from that first episode, though, I'm just going to say. I mean, I, like, <laughs> I, like, I really loved it, and I thought it was beautiful, but come on, there was something not there. You were there, yeah, briefly. But, yeah, but come on, that was not doing him justice, you know. I think it was enough, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, Thank what you can so you say about him this season? Can, has he changed at all after Bree came and spoke with him? What do you think? Well, do, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I really don't know what I'm a, no. Uh, um, <laughs> oh my God. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, yes, I know you've all read the book, but I don't know what I can and can't say. <laughs> we need he to can't get, say give much. Ed more whiskey. Okay, here's a question you we can answer. We just brought Ed here to look pretty. I shouldn't really I be up here at all. Um, how was the wedding cake? You guys had to stuff yourselves with that. How was the wedding cake? You can answer that, right? Um, the wedding cake. I think it had alcohol in it. It definitely had alcohol in it. <laughs> Sophie and I were pissed by the end of like the fourth take. It definitely had some brandy in there. Can I say pissed? Oh, this is live. Right. Um, it was good. It was also very inebriated. <laughs> it was. Do you know what? It was really hard to cut. Yeah, it was solid. It was really, really dense. But it was. It was we nice. should also talk about everyone else at the wedding and how inebriated they were, Lauren. Yeah, Lauren Lyle. <laughs> I don't know. I Lauren, don't know you, you play drunk acting about. very well. I am a young woman and I don't. I don't drink. I don't know what. <laughs> We you were mean. impressed with the uh, tongue twister. Uh huh. Could you I do was... that now? Yes. Go on then. Off you go. Woo. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I could. I could. I could. Uh, there. What was it? There was an old pheasant. There was an old pheasant, and he's not too pleasant. And though I'm not a pheasant plucker, something about a pheasant plucking, and I'll get the pheasant plucking done. Yes. <laughs> Still got it. It'd be rude not to have whiskey at that point in time. I'm sorry that it wasn't Sasnak, but it our, was... Um, <laughs> our director, Stephen Wolfenden, <laughs> no. came over to Sam and I Why are you doing the day this? after, and he was like, they were so great. They were so into the scene, and they all looked he like they were really having fun, and they... Lauren plays a great drunk. <laughs> no! <laughs> he he came up to me after and just shook my hand and went, you were really there. I was like... <laughs> we, we, and what we... I don't think he knew about was how many hip flasks were being passed around that night. It's, it's method. Oh, yeah. the, we, shot the, that, the, we shot the wedding over many, many Months. days. And, um, yeah, so it, it, was, it was needed, wasn't it? It was a little... And then there's Claire looking after the baby while she's necking flute glasses of wine. Every Very scene of Claire is just drinking. <laughs> That's all Claire did at the wedding. She just drank. Fair enough. <laughs> We're so different. <laughs> Drink for me. Okay, Mercosta down yeah. here. Woo! 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 Uh, Refill, please. <laughs> Keep them coming every five minutes until I pass out. And I'll be uh, Maria and Duncan, what are those scenes like for you both to play? Awful. I mean, <laughs> I'm literally raging because I d haven't seen episode one yet because I missed the cast and crew and then I didn't want to watch it on a laptop or something. So I waited till tonight. And then just when the big feckin' love shack scene came on, we were all like airlifted to come back to come here. So I flip and I still haven't seen it. God damn it. Jeez. Anyway, it was like, it was a terrible, terrible hardship to have to do that with Duncan Lacroix, obviously. It, yeah, it's, it's out of my comfort zone. That's, that's for sure. But. I think you, you put that silver mane on. <laughs> you put Granny's muff on your chin and you're just ready to go, you know. <laughs> you're possessed by the God of love. And things happen. <laughs> we all live from Macasta, come on. That's... I love that. Another, by the way, another moment that I loved in this episode <coughs> was seeing you and Katrina try to juggle being intimate with also a crying baby. So it's kind of like we see Jamie get to be the father that he never was with, with a newborn. So are we gonna see more scenes and episodes where perhaps they're babysitting for little Jeremiah? Um, Not if that's how they're behaving, we won't. Yeah, no, right? What? 
Very irresponsible grandparents, say. Eh? We leave you with our child for Sorry, one you night. Sex. Oh, you have sex. One night. Can I say what you was have originally? Sex. And he's in the room. In the script. Uh, yes. What's that? I didn't hear you down can I? Can I say what was originally in the script? Sure, go ahead. Originally, the baby was in the basket right next to the bed. <laughs> And I they were very like, attentive <laughs> grandparents. I was like, that's just weird. The baby's almost two. I didn't know. The baby problem. was asleep. That baby not is never long. asleep. Well, not because of you two. It's never asleep. Making all that noise. <laughs> so basically, in episode 502, Jamie and Claire get arrested. Um, <laughs> God. No, honestly, but that, that um, actually shooting that scene, that child, um, bless him, was, was really not enjoying being there. So there wasn't a lot of acting required, I remember. It was, it was like, wait, just wait, 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 he's stopped, go! And it was, it was pretty tough. But. Well, no, we didn't actually keep the baby in during all the rest. FYI, everybody. We didn't? No. <laughs> no, Sam, Sam, there's laws in the UK. You can't have babies in the same room at the You're same so time. You're so pretty, oh, really? Sam. Yeah. <laughs> no, we shot the baby out very quickly. We did? And huh. it was gone. So it was in the next door. Um, Trina, I think um, shooting the baby out has kind of got a different connotation <laughs> in America. Let's not do that. We, oh my we got God, the baby oh, shots, baby. and then we let it go home. We didn't shoot anybody. <laughs> we didn't shoot anybody. <laughs> okay, David. Poor... That's me. I just need to say your name, and that's... that's Sorry, I just woke up. <laughs> I love it. Um, poor Lord John looked very sad at this wedding. Um... Is he going to get any joyous moments coming up this evening? He deserves happiness so much. What can you say? Please give us some hope. I know. He does. And um, does he get any happy moments? Well, there was that one time. I can't even talk about it, but any time he sees his best friend, he's kind of like really happy. And he likes hanging out with the Frasers and... He's really happy and sad at the same time when he has to hang out. I'm very conflicted about the whole thing, but yeah. Okay, before we get to some more lighthearted stuff, I just want to close out this portion of, of the episode, that last scene with Sam and with Duncan. What you guys did was so emotionally heartbreaking. Um, Talk about doing those scenes. What is it like? Is it, is it easy because you guys have such a great rapport together or are those scenes really difficult to do? I would say, so first of all, this is a major departure from Diana Gabaldon's amazing books. Woo! Um, and we're very fortunate to, to, to you know, work very closely to our books, but this is one of the storylines that we did um, go somewhere else with. Obviously, Murta is on the side of uh, the regulators and Jamie has been commissioned to hunt him down. And um, yeah, Jamie has always had this father figure, always had this sort of constant, silent, generally silent um, person to, to look after him and be there and be his guide. And so it was a great silent honor. Silent but deadly. <laughs> silent but deadly. It was a great honor to work with Duncan. And as you can tell, um, yeah, we, we had a lot of fun, and it's a really cool storyline this season. Um, yeah, I, I think, it, it, um, forgive me if I'm wrong, but like, didn't you change the edit so it was kind of bookended? Uh, yeah, so we, moved it, we moved it from the original script because, uh, actually, it was such a powerful scene. Well, and you know, uh, so at the beginning, you see, uh, you know, that I think that... Um, Diana's words, you know, that, that original oath that, um, that Murta gives to Ellen um, about Jamie. And then, you, it, so that kind of resonates again at the end. And uh, um, I just think uh, the emotion of those scenes, I think the audience do a lot of work because they've lived with these two characters. You've lived with these two characters now over the space of six seasons. Um, so you know that relationship. And, I, yeah, I, you know, I'm kind of, I, I don't want to 
blow smoke up your ass, Ben. But like, Please you know, do. I'm, I don't have to do much. I mean, it's, it, I, Sam's such a great actor, and and Mert is, <laughs> Mert is such a kind of a stoic character that um, it, it's more what the audience brings and what Sam does that that resonates that kind of close relationship, that relationship we all want, that, that rock that we all need in our life. And um, yeah, so I, I just stand there and uh, look stoic. Basically, that's nonsense. Doing those scenes. That's that's nonsense. I think that's Duncan let Sam do selling the acting himself and very short. Duncan yeah. has made this character his own, and it, he's such a strong character. Isn't no, and, and, and to that point is in the script, the original script, that, that wasn't in the right, that wasn't in the same place. And we watched the, we watched the, um, the original cut and we all thought this is such a powerful moment. It's the way to end the premiere. It's the way to end the first episode because Sam and Duncan just knocked it out of the ballpark and you guys just saw it. And, and there's a dry eye in the house. And so we moved it to the end because it's the way to close. It was the absolute right way to close that episode. And that's the difference between, you know, in, in, in the way Diana writes and the way we edit and the way we, we create the show is we're dealing with living and breathing people and Diana can do whatever the hell she wants anytime she wants. <laughs> and she does. And um, we, that's, that's, that really is the difference. So, you know, we see this, this beautiful scene and we go, that's where it belongs. And that's, that's where we put it. So. Good call. Yep. It was so beautiful. All of you guys, I'm consistently blown away by your performances in every episode. I don't know how you do it, but major kudos to you all. Um, okay, you ready to have some fun with some Twitter questions that yes. cracked me up so much. Oh, God, no. If I could favorite these a million times, I would. Okay, this is from Steve Sondheim, 23. Steve. Hey, Steve. Steve. Sondheim. Oh, oh. We're going to be in a musical. Sondheim. Is it him? Is it him? Is it him? No, I don't think it's him. Oh. All right. Oh, then I don't care. If, <laughs> no, if Outlander were a reality show, who would be the first eliminated and who would be the winner? Oh, um, do you have can, to can, sing in this reality show? Because then we have our elimination right here. Can, can I answer that question? Wait, what? Hang what? on a second. I, what the I hell? Didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do anything. I didn't. That's some bullshit right there. Well, <laughs> See you, Richard. Yeah. Roger is, far, I think, probably the second most intelligent person in the entire show. Just behind Claire. I think he would work his way through it. I think he would, I think he would, work, some, I think he would work some stuff out and I think he would be probably at least the second last standing. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Is this, this an the engineer? Voice, huh? Brianna's an is engineer. Is this the voice or is it American Idol? Yeah, what is the reality show? Is it cheer? Yeah, what, yeah you gotta know Love what Island reality is. Is it Survivor or is it? I mean, it? If, it's, it's if it's Love Island, like Jamie and Claire are gonna win. Um, if it's The Voice. Is it Hunger He's Games him. style? Because... Because then Roger's then really I, oh, then I'm gonna win. Yeah. Love Island. Wait, wait. Survivor. <laughs> in, case, in case you hadn't noticed, we're a very competitive bunch. I, so. No, I love it. <laughs> By the way, if it's Hunger Games style, I say Marsley kills everybody. Oh, yeah. Take it. Take it. I, I will, but I will. Okay, yes, moving on. This is from Heather at Ski Heat. For what? everyone, I don't know. If you were an adult beverage, what would you be? If you were a what? I'm sorry? You were an ad if you were an adult beverage, what What's would you be? What's an adult beverage? What would, Merta be, what would Merta be as a cocktail? He'd be a dark and I'd, stormy. Dark and stormy, yeah. I'd be a spicy margarita. Because in my past life, I was a Hernandez, so. Does that explain all the hair? Well, <laughs> what would Bonnet be? Coronavirus! Coronavirus! <laughs> 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 Mic drop. <laughs> oh, my God. From the back row. Oh, my God. Okay, this is from ES Andrews 1. When Katrina and Sam took the job, did you have any idea of some of the physical things you would have to do? And how many, if any, times did you say to yourselves, holy crap, I'm going to have to do this? I missed it. Every day? 
Right. Yeah, I think every day. It's, uh, it's, it's, I mean, what kind of physical things is he referring to? He didn't elaborate. <laughs> Use your imagination. The show is always challenging, isn't it? Like, it's amazing. That's what's so great about it. We're always moving in different locations. We're always, uh, every episode has a different challenge. And I think we're always learning. Even if we're in Fraser's Ridge, there's always something going on. Well, it's amazing. I think uh, we, we've had a few physical, like, they were going to take us in for axe, like wood axe training. And I was like, I got this. I grew up in the country. Right, Matt? <laughs> Yeah. But I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Carry on. Let's move on. Next one. I love it. Okay. Since tomorrow is Valentine's Day, has being a Yay. part of this show made you more romantic in your real lives? Yes. <laughs> we, we, we didn't hear that down here. Um, are you more romantic now you've been working on the show for some time? Yes. Uh, yes, yeah, totally. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I do outlander shit yes. every day. Every day. I say Jamie Fraser stuff all the time. Every time I write a card now, it's a quote from Jamie fucking. I don't do that, but I do outlander stuff every day. Although, given that we couldn't tell the difference between Disney characters, Dora and Jamie Fraser, that doesn't say a lot. We gave you the episode early for Valentine's. Come on. By the way, can I just say, you guys have the best hair of any cast I've ever been with. You all need your own hair commercials. You They're keep looking at the four of them. What oh, do you want? All, all, all of oh, us. All of you. About no, we're pretty good no, on the hair. All of you, yeah, we seriously. Do good hair. Sam and I lost all of ours from dying it red. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. We did. No, we're selling it. <laughs> no, you guys do. Okay, so we're going to play a game now to see how well you know each other. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh-oh. I tried really hard on these questions. Is everyone I, still awake? I hope. <laughs> You've been here ages without a drink. I think I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> anyway, carry on. Sorry. Okay, ready? So this actor's, and when I say actor, I mean both female and male. This actor's first film role was in The Devil Wears Prada. Yeah. Katrina yeah. Bell. She was a model in The Elevator. Yeah. Oh Boom. my God. Yeah. I think I Can was. Can you a recreate fox. it now? She, her foot no, like was I in The Elevator. Think my foot Can you reenact it? Can you show us that right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll go and watch the film. <laughs> well done, Sophie. Can okay. I be on your team? Huh? Can I be on your team? Yeah. <laughs> We'll kill everyone. <laughs> so okay. This actor played Tom Cruise's role in Rain Man on the stage in London. Ed Spillers. Ed Spillers. Ed Spillers. Ed. Oh, wait, can I ask a Woo! question? Who from the cast went to see that? Actually, there's only one person who came to see it. Yeah. I, Thanks, I, ladies and I, gentlemen. I, I, I have no good excuse. You told me you were going to come and see it time and I'm time. Sorry, and actually, I said you told sorry. me you were going to come so and see it as well. I, I was busy. I, I never said I was I going, you. so I'm oh, fine. You were there. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to see it, so. <laughs> okay, this actor's real last name is Harris. Richard. Is it me? Richard, Richard. I'm winning this. It's I think you. it's me. Oh. oh, is it? Are you Richard Harris? It's yeah. Richard Harris. Did you not know? I you didn't that. know that? Ed, Ed, Ed that. Ed just Did you asked, not know? Ed just asked if he said I think that's who we thought we were casting Hairless. originally, right? <laughs> Richard Harris. We thought we were Richard casting him, Hairless. and then you showed up. They, got it, they want to be changed. Ah, uh, you guys thought you were getting Dumbledore for Roger. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay, this actor says their dream job is that of a professional eater. Ah, uh, is that me? A professional or what? Eater. eater. Like eater. It might it be loves me. food, is eats food. Is it, is it you? What? Guys? Sophie. Lauren? It must be. No. Sophie? So Sophie Sam? does eat a lot. I don't know. I, I like bread. bread. Get out of my face. You do love is bread. Was it me? Duncan? Was it Lauren? Uh, I think no. it was We Lauren. don't know. I'm going no. with... No, I'm nobody knows. Know it's Lauren. Lauren. When did I... You wrote it on your Twitter. Did I? You did. Oh. <laughs> Lauren will eat for I, money. Nobody I think meant anything they meant right on Twitter. <laughs> this is Richard, my publicist, Listen. and apparently I'll eat for money. <laughs> I would Which not I lie about like, that. If you want to, we'll do it later. I wouldn't lie about that. I would own that. Yeah. Okay. He's dark. 
This actor has a film company named Mermaid. Named what? Mer Mermaid. Yeah. Mermaid. Is it Spew? Maria? Maria Doyle Kennedy. Yeah. Woo! Mermaid. There you go. Woo! Okay, Woo! last. Yeah. Woo! Okay, last two. This actor's parents are toy inventors. Sophie. Sophie Skelton. Oh, cool jobs. Cool jobs. I love that. What's your favorite toy? That they've that they invented. invented? Uh, they work for Disney a lot, so they did the Cinderella slipper game. But I've never played it, but I'll just say that one because that's actually the only one that I know. <laughs> Can you get us all the free game? We play. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Free Cinderella slippers. <laughs> uh, that's why we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're telling me to wrap up, but I'm going to go through two more. Okay, th uh, let's see. This actor follows Graceland's official Instagram account. Sam. Sam. Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. Well, I, I went to, to Graceland. Uh -huh. well, I saw that picture, yeah. yeah. Wait, give us your best Elvis impersonation. Uh huh. <laughs> so so give us the hat, Sam. Up. Give us the hat. Yeah. Oh, that's later at the party. Yeah. Well, the real Elvis. You're all invited. Come on. <laughs> okay, lastly, this actor considered turning down the role in Outlander until their mother-in-law convinced them not to. Yes. Duncan LaCroix. That was you, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey. That's me. Yeah. What, what, did she, <laughs> what did she say to convince? Why you didn't you didn't love us? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> you didn't love us? What the hell? Where is she? I hadn't met you yet. She's hadn't just met a big fan. What did she say to you to make you want it? <laughs> You're you gonna all host. You need to rein it in right Sorry. now. <laughs> um, uh, okay, last thing before Thank we you. go. Moving on. I go on. And I, I go I, on. I just thought of this because I made Sam do it on the carpet before I had a full-on coughing attack, and I'm very sorry about that again. Um, you were saying that the season finale in season five is completely mind-blowing. It's one of the best finales you've ever seen in your life? Well, no, I've not seen it. Oh. However... Okay. I, I was in it. You filmed it. Uh, I think... I do not know, I've not seen it. Diana's seen it. Yeah, let's, let's let Diana take this one. What have I seen? <laughs> well... Ep oh, Ep Ep Diana wrote yes, episode 11 yes, this season. It's the best finale he's been in. Uh, the best finale he's been in. Ah, uh, he might be right, yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> we don't know. I feel it's a very strong um, finale, and we worked very hard on it, so mm -hmm. we're hoping that it will be. But, yeah, I think it's probably one of our strongest finales we've done. Okay, so here's what I want all you to do. I want you to show the audience your reaction to reading that season finale script. Show us your reaction when you read it. Oh, the... the, the... Give... Uh, uh, where's Roger? Uh, uh, nope. Yeah, let's Not let's Roger. see that reaction. Nope. Murray. Roger. <laughs> what the fuck? Where am I? What the fuck? Uh, Matt. Where's Roger? Words, words, words. Not me. Yeah, not stage me. direction, stage direction. Oh, me. Direction. Oh. <laughs> We're giving nothing away. I know, it's fine. We're giving nothing away. It's fine. All I will say is I, I think we all took a risk and... As we've said, we've not seen it yet, but I think it's amazing that our writers and that our creative team, that five seasons in are still willing to really like take a huge risk. I hope that it's paid off, um, but it was really challenging for a lot of us. And, you know, doing challenging, risky material is very rewarding as an actor, and I hope it's rewarding for you as an audience as well. You well, guys are um, truly phenomenal. And like I said, just in closing, I have never gotten so many emails and messages from fans before I moderated a panel to tell me how much the show means to them and the incredible work you guys do. I, I, I second it all. You guys are truly amazing and mind-blowing. Every part of this production is incredible. So thank you for being... I know you're all jet-lagged, too, so thank you for being thank here. Thank you to you lot. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for staying. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you.